Breaking news, uh, Donald Trump is airborne just moments ago. His plane uh, lifted off and from Newark, New Jersey there, as you can see, he is heading down to Miami. He'll be spending the evening at Trump National Doral, uh, spending the night there because tomorrow he will be arraigned on the charges. The federal indictment brought by Special Prosecutor Jack Smith. You're looking live on the right side of your screen. The plane just taking off moments ago, and it is airborne, still in sight there from that pool camera from New Jersey. We're tracking it from the ground in Florida, down in Miami as well. We'll have much more on Donald Trump's arrival in Florida in just a moment. But now we do want to bring in uh, to discuss the case is Attorney and advisor to the Donald Trump campaign for 2024, Christina Bob, and also with us is former federal prosecutor Andrew Cherkasky. It's great to have you both in with us today. Thank you so Good much for here. having me. Uh, so, first off, uh, I want to get your reaction uh, to kind of the feeling of what we're seeing here, Christina. Um, you are very close to the former president. Uh, we know he is now uh, looking for new lawyers. He posted to Truth Social about his legal shakeup, saying that he will be represented by Todd Blanche. And a firm mm -hmm. to be named later, uh, but obviously tomorrow is a is a big day for him as he goes in front of Judge Cannon to enter a plea. Um, procedurally, right. how will this how will this play out? Well, getting an arraignment, as we know, we recently watched this in New York. He basically goes before the court. The purpose of the arraignment is to make sure that the accused understands the charges, his rights. Um, and has all of the information presented about what the government is charging him with. I don't expect it to take uh, too much time, as we saw when it happened in New York. You know, it's a, a fairly quick hearing, um, depending on whether the attorneys want all of the charges read or if, you know, they, they go over it with him themselves. Uh, will determine the length of the hearing. But it's going to be largely procedural. I don't think there's going to be a lot of substance uh, presented tomorrow. You know, and Andrew, no, no cameras in the courtroom. Um, we we're just showing some pictures of New York, so it won't be hopefully as much of a circus atmosphere. But you know, these are very serious charges. Trump is facing 37 federal charges, a total maximum sentence of 400 years in prison related to the handling of classified documents. But some are saying this should really be under the Presidential Records Act, which is a civil, a civil case. The fact they're bringing in espionage. It seems like uh, this case is going to be something. Uh, it doesn't seem that espionage really is the crime here. You know, I'm not actually that impressed that the that these are particularly serious allegations. I'm one of a few people in the country who have actually tried a classified case to trial in front of a jury, uh, and these cases can become quite. Uh, serious when there's some sort of allegation of of giving classified documents to foreign adversaries or using them in ways to particularly harm the United States. That's nowhere anywhere implicated in the indictment in this case. Uh, so we really have to look at the nature of the allegations here, and it ultimately comes down to a dispute over documents. And we know that every president in recent history has had some degree of dispute over the documents that they keep versus the documents that the National Archive keeps. I'm not not impressed by the National Archives and their authorities, their authority over these documents. Remember, that's a, a division of the executive branch. And so it is inferior to the president of the United States. I think there are so many ways that this case can be attacked. But at a fundamental level, the first element of the crime deals with the unauthorized possession of these documents. And I think Donald Trump has a fantastic case to make that there is reasonable doubt as to whether he was authorized or not to have these documents. Christina, you were there the day they raided Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we hear often about how Joe Biden was able to have his attorneys present. There mm -hmm. was no raid at the Penn Biden Center or in the garage with the Corvette. Just kind of tell us again, when you were there that day during the raid, do you feel like you were kept away from what was happening? Were there some, some missteps there with the overreach? <laughs> Yeah, the way the difference in how they handled the raid of Mar-a-Lago versus Joe Biden, it's night and day difference. Yes, I was forced to stand outside on the Circle Drive at Mar-a-Lago in August in Florida in 80, 90 something degree heat for about eight to 10 hours while the FBI went through all of the rooms. I would completely agree with Andrew's assessment. Donald Trump was 100 uh, percent authorized to keep everything he kept. Uh, and it was actually the Department of Justice that actually had to return materials because they took things they were not allowed to possess and had to return them. So if anybody is at fault of having material that they're not allowed to possess, it would be the Department of Justice. So, uh, yeah, I think the way that this case has been handled between the difference between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, I think it speaks for itself. I don't think that this is a very solid case. President Trump had every right 
to have possession of those documents. And the only statute that applies to Donald Trump on this is the Presidential Records Act, 44 U.S.C. 20, Section 2203 Alpha, which specifically says the president and only the president is the one who has authority to make this call. And I'll go so far to say it's the only case law, that Judicial Watch versus NARA, that, that's the only case law that addresses this. The judge went so far to say is not only is it only the president that makes this call, but it's not the archivist. She said that. It's not the archivist who makes this call. And uh, DOJ's entire case depends on the fact that it was the archivist who said President Trump can't keep these materials. So I think their case is dead on arrival. Christina and Andrew, certainly appreciate your legal expertise, your time today, sort of breaking down how you see this playing out. Obviously, a, uh, a big, a big uh, day tomorrow and a big day today as Trump is um, en route at this hour to Florida. Thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.